Welcome to Face to Face with me, Lauren Booth. This programme explores political stories making the news with the figures at their heart. In today's show, I will be talking to the founder of Islam for UK. Anjem Chowdhury is at the centre of a controversy over his plan to stage a protest against British troops in the very town where the bodies of dead soldiers are returned to the UK. The public outcry at this proposal was so fierce that it resulted in the British government outlawing his organisation. Anjum Chowdhury, welcome to Face to Face. Let's talk first of all about Islam for UK. What was the purpose of this organisation? Yes, Islam for UK in fact was a more a website orientated platform which is part of Al Muhajirun and Al Muhajirun are a global movement the founder of which is Sheikh Omar Bakri Muhammad we function in many countries our main objectives are to invite the societies in which we live to think about Islam as an alternative way of life to command good and forbid evil wherever we are and ultimately as well to establish the Sharia on state level which is the Khilafah system of governance in order to be a beacon uh, uh, again in the world uh, an example of how people should live their lives. So Islam for UK is an offshoot as what you call a global movement sort of platform in the UK how many uh, members did you uh, get to your movement in the UK? Well we uh, try to steer away from the administration and the membership but what I can say to you is that uh, among the practicing Muslims in Britain and indeed globally I think we have a huge amount of support many people attend our conferences our demonstrations many people support us and uh, I do believe that we speak uh, the language which many people want to say but perhaps are afraid let's talk about some of the statements coming out from your Islam for UK website they were very incendiary they've inflamed a big debate in the United Kingdom one of the photos that you released showed, for example, the Buckingham Palace, the home of the British royal family, converted into a mosque. Uh, is that your aim? And what did you expect the British public to react by releasing photos like that? Yes, one of our campaigns, in fact, was to invite Britain to adopt the Sharia as an alternative. And part and parcel of that was to give them an example of how Britain may look had the Sharia been implemented. So, for example, under the Sharia, there's no monarchy system. So Buckingham Palace certainly would not be the home for the monarch uh, who is in existence today, which is Queen Elizabeth II. Rather, we can have an alternative, not necessarily cast in stone, but one of the options, for example, is to have a masjid, which in the past used to be a hospital, a place of refuge, and had many other functions. And as well, there'll be no idolatry in Islam. Therefore, Nelson's column would not exist, and we uh, propose an, uh, an alternative as perhaps you know a place where people could be called to prayer but all of this process was on the one hand to engage the British public's mind in uh, is there an alternative to man-made law and on the other hand to uh, engage in the public discussion on what is the future for mankind I do believe and as Muslims we do believe that there is a clash between two civilizations today one civilization based upon man who believe that man is sovereign and they believe that they have the right to legislate and one civilization who believe that sovereignty and supremacy belong to God. It's rather strange to talk about engaging people while rubbishing their society's values and their royal family. Well, you know, we have many examples, in fact, how the previous uh, messengers used to destroy the uh, idols in their time. So Abraham, uh, who, who, uh, who non-Muslims know as, uh, who Muslims know as Ibrahim, alayhi salam, destroyed the idols in his time. The people in the past used to, used to worship the idols which they used to make with their hands. Nowadays, people worship idols which are more intellectual, like democracy, liberalism, freedom, and so on. So these as well need to be destroyed and replaced with uh, worshipping and, uh, and obeying idols. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's talk a little bit about your proposed uh, protest in Wooten Bassett where um, British troops are repatriated, uh, mourners gather to, to greet the bodies of dead soldiers. You wanted to have a protest there. What was the aim of that protest? Yeah, the main aim of that was in fact to expose the lies of the British government because ultimately what is taking place in Wooten Bassett is that they have parades quite regularly there. One or two British soldiers, I think, are dying almost every day in Afghanistan. And 
And uh, the government is using this for political mileage. They're saying, look, these people are dying for freedom and democracy. These people are heroes. They're, in fact, uh, defending the life and the, and the property of the people in Afghanistan. I've got Whereas, to stop you there because the people who line the streets wouldn't say that they were being forced onto the street. They choose ah, to, to go and pay their I respects I, I, to dead bodies. I agree bodies. with you. I agree with you. And the, and the protest or the procession was not against the people of Wotan Bassett. And it was not as well for the fact that the people are paying their own respects in their personal way to the people who have passed away. But this was more highlighting the foreign policy of the British government. Remember eight years ago when the British government said that they were going to go to Afghanistan, originally it was to catch Sheikh Osama bin Laden and it was to defend the people there in that region. And then slowly, slowly this changed from being a one or a three year campaign into now what people are saying could be a 40 or 50 year campaign. And that's changed now to one of, of uh, you know, uh, if they're not in Kabul, for example, then the British in some way will be in danger back we'll, here. We'll come to Afghanistan in a moment. I wanted to talk a little bit more about the idea of respecting people's beliefs for example, the dignity of grief shown on the streets of Wooten Bassett. You said in a statement, British troops in Afghanistan are behaving like Nazis. That was a reported quote. Did you say that? No, what I, what I in fact said is that um, uh, the argument that uh, these people are merely doing their job as soldiers and therefore they cannot be blamed, I think is the same argument which people used for Nazi Germany, that they were merely soldiers. But I don't think that you or I would accept someone to kill our own parents or our children and then to, then to say, on the other hand, that we're just following orders. So if you're not going to accept that for your own family, why should the Muslims accept that argument for our own brethren? in Muslim countries. So the protest didn't happen because the counter outrage was immense. It's, ca it's caused a media storm, it's caused uh, 200,000 people to join a Facebook group called Stop Islam for UK. You actually become a poster boy for the far right here. You've uh, managed to do the job of the BMP, some people have said, by instilling fear into the British public about Islam. Is that your aim? If it wasn't, you've done it. Well, I think that ultimately, you know, if you look at the uh, lives of the prophets and the people who followed them, certainly the whole of the society in their, in their generations used to be against them. And when, when they used to be called trustworthy, that was before the revelation came. After that, they used to be called lunatics, mad people, and, uh, you know, all kinds of names. So we do expect this, and especially in a time when the British government are at war, in fact, with Muslims. And we can see that there's a very strong media propaganda machine out there demonizing Islam Islam demonizing Muslims. If you want to swim against this tsunami, if you like, of propaganda against Islam and Muslims, of course you're going to be demonized. But I think that uh, the Wooten Bassett uh, episode did concentrate many people's minds, whether they like it or not, on the reality of what is actually taking place in Afghanistan, which was the main purpose. If the people want to attack me personally or they want to ban our organization, ultimately we do what we do for the sake of Allah. And if you please Allah, the Prophet said, if, you, if the one who pleases Allah, he thereby displeases the people, Allah will be pleased with him and he will make the people pleased. Now you wrote a letter to uh, families explaining why you wanted to protest in Wooten Bassett and um, in it you said that this wasn't disrespectful in any way and you wanted to lift the veil uh, covering British people um, to the realities of war in Afghanistan. But aren't there already groups doing that in the UK? Well, no, I don't think there are. The whole of the Stop the War Coalition was about purely saying that they don't want war per se. But to say that they don't want war per se uh, is not good enough because ultimately they are in the region and there are many innocent people being murdered. And the, obviously the people in the region as well have a right to defend themselves. So what we are ultimately saying to the British is that this is a war which is unwinnable for them because I do believe and every Muslim believes certainly the Mujahideen would prevail. Sorry, you're but moving, what, what, your, you're moving your arguments from what you've actually said in the letter, because well, in the I'm letter, you, that. In the letter, you, the letter. Sta you stated that your raison d'etre is to represent the dead in Afghanistan and Iraq and give them a voice, yeah. but two million people turned out on the streets of the UK several years ago to protest uh, British troops going to Iraq in the first place. Why not join with them? No, because I don't believe that their call was correct. They were calling for the socialist and communist ideas, and many people are pacifists. We do believe as Muslims that every Muslim has a right to defend himself, his life on and property. And what we were saying to the British public is that your government is lying to you. The British public, uh, public are blissfully unaware of what they're sending their children, their sons and daughters uh, to face in Afghanistan. They will have many more casualties and it's not good for them. And obviously the carnage which is being uh, meted out by the air raids and by all of the other actions of the US and the UK, let alone